Thailand is not what you think it is. Let's be honest, what attracts people to Thailand is its booming sex industry. If it wasn't about happy ending massages, if it wasn't about the brothels, if it wasn't about the girly bars, how many men would really be visiting Thailand each year? Their attraction would go down substantially and rapidly. Most travelers to Thailand happen to be single men looking to get laid. Don't get me wrong, many countries have problems related to terrorism, homicides, animal abuse, like all these things are common across all continents. It doesn't just happen in Thailand. However, when you open up the internet and you search for Thailand and the experiences that people are having, they're painting perfect pictures. You know, they're painting a fantasy that doesn't really exist. Don't get me wrong, Thailand is a beautiful country. Thailand offers a booming sex industry. It offers some of the most beautiful beaches that you will ever see in your life, low cost of living, and a phenomenal outdoor dining experience. Let me get started talking about safe in Thailand because so many people are saying well Thailand is one of the safest countries in the entire world well on one hand it is on the other hand it really isn't if we take a look at some of the news that we've gotten to see over the past number of years you know where we saw people getting killed we saw terrorist attacks in Thailand like terrorist attacks are actually quite frequent in Thailand it didn't just happen once they happened multiple times over the past number of years and yes they happened even more so in Europe they happened in many countries worldwide but to say that Thailand is the safest country on the planet is just so far from the truth it really isn't this past December a Canadian man and his Thai wife were stabbed outside their home and this happened very recently my friend this isn't some wild story from a couple decades ago it happened just two months ago What's really interesting about this homicide, which it is, it happened because of something very trivial. I mean, if you read this newspaper article, and I'm going to post the link below, and I'm going to have it displayed right here, it says that Mr. Kachornzak and the couple had frequently argued over parking. Mr. Kachornzak said the front of his house had frequently been blocked by motorcycles and cars of people who visited the couple at night. I mean, let's be real. If a homicide happens because of something this trivial, just imagine what other problems might arise when living in a country like Thailand. It's crazy to even think about murdering a person or couple for such a idiotic reason. This is something that you can work out, you can talk it out. There are many solutions to solving this problem. Here's another one. A violent death of American tourist in Phuket probed by local police of the grim discovery at hotel. It says the police are investigating the death of an American tourist who was found with stab wounds and lacerations to his throat in his room on Monday morning at a hotel near Bang Dao Beach in the Talang district of the island. Keeping stuff discovered his decomposing body at 9 40 a.m. and called the police. Officers are trying to establish whether the man died at his own hands or whether there was a third party involved. Well, in many cases, and probably most cases, if you find a man or woman who got stabbed, I mean, most likely they didn't stab themselves. It certainly is a possibility, but the odds of this man having stabbed himself are actually quite low. And let's be real, there are tons and tons of homicides reported in Thailand every single year. And many of these homicides, they were actually against tourists, they were against foreigners. Homicides are very, very common in Thailand. You just don't hear about them as much as you do in other countries where the mainstream media is pushing this negative information for us to hear. Thailand suffered several shooting attacks in public places in recent years. Two dead in Bangkok mall shooting, 14-year-old boy arrested. The article by France24.com says a 14-year-old boy was arrested Tuesday after a shooting at a packed Bangkok mall that left two people dead and five wounded and sent hundreds of panic shoppers running in terror into the streets. And then there was this crazy massacre that I'm pretty sure you've heard about. This article by Reuters says Thailand massacre ex-cop kills 24 children in knife and gun rampage. In one of the world's worst child death tolls in a massacre by a single killer in recent history, most of the children who died at the daycare center in Uttai Sawan, a town 500 kilometers 310 miles northeast of Bangkok 
were stabbed to death, police said. The reason why we're talking about these serious crimes that happened in Thailand in recent years is for us to put things in perspective. There are many of us who believe that Asia is the safest continent on the planet, and there's no doubt that many areas in Asia are perfectly safe, and chances of you falling victim to violent crime in Bangkok are actually very, very small. However, bad and serious crimes happen everywhere and Thailand is no exception. This is the point of today's video, but there's a lot more to be said specifically about the laws that are being put in place. It isn't just about the increases in recent violence in Thailand that we're talking about in today's video that I wanted to address with you in today's video. There's actually a lot more that I want to undress in this video because I want to make sure that you are 100% prepared before traveling to Thailand. And most importantly, I want you to form the right expectations before your trip specifically if you're looking to settle down in Thailand. One of the biggest downsides that have driven foreigners out of Thailand in recent years are Thailand's immigration policies that keep changing every so often. If you have followed the recent changes in Thailand, you're aware of the fact that you just never know what you're going to get. Requirements keep changing. And to be fair, they keep changing in many countries. However, in very few countries are immigration policies changing as quickly, rapidly and unpredictably as in Thailand. Let me give you an example. A friend of mine and I, we applied for the Thai lead visa. It was during the past health crisis where we had the best of intentions of visiting Thailand and becoming a long-term pass holder. Obviously, things have changed over the past number of years. We both witnessed dramatic changes on so many levels where we just decided that, hey, maybe Thailand is not the place for us. Even though Thailand is a very beautiful country, it is rich in nature, there's so many friendly locals in Thailand. The food is fantastic. The beaches are beautiful. It's a great quality of life and many people refer to Thailand as their Shangri-La, which is something that I completely agree with. However, when it comes to settling down in a country for the long term, it does take a bit more value than just beautiful sceneries, low cost of living and sex. There's more to it. Nomads following this specific channel, they're into security. They're into predictability. They want to know, they want to be sure that whatever they decide to do, whoever they want to get in bed with, that that person is going to be loyal to them for the time they're going to be in that country and hopefully and possibly forever. And we haven't really seen this picture out of Asia lately. Asia has undergone some of the most drastic visa changes, ongoing visa changes out of any continent that this world got to offer. It's just a matter of fact. While Thailand's elite did relaunch the Thai elite visa, they did some rebranding, you know, they made some changes, some tweaks, if you will. However, it remains a long-term visit pass. The Thai elite visa, whatever the current name is, it is not a real residence permit, it is not a work permit, it is not a path to citizenship, all it really is is a long-term visit pass. And the question is whether it's worth paying tens of thousands or even a hundred thousand dollars or more for a social visit pass, because that's all that you're gonna get. Well, there's nothing wrong with spending tens of thousands of dollars or even a hundred thousand dollars or more on a social visit pass. It definitely is quite a bit of money for the average person. And if you really wanna establish yourself in a country for the long term, you probably wanna be looking into a country or countries that offer you real unconditional permanent residence with reciprocal rights, meaning a path to citizenship, work permit and real unconditional permanent residency where you know that once you have obtained permanent residency, it is extendable, it is renewable, right? And it is for life. This is what permanent residency means, what it's supposed to mean. Permanent residency is supposed to mean it is for a lifetime. It's not for a short period of time. It is not under certain conditions, but don't get me wrong. If you should commit to serious crimes, if you should get convicted in the country you are a resident of, I do believe that any country should have the right to send you back to where you came from. This goes without saying whether you're in Thailand, in Mexico, in Paraguay, in Austria, in the USA, in Australia, wherever you're located, you have to follow the local laws. Just to be clear again, if you should decide to get the Thai lead visa and if you want to get it, go ahead and get it. It's really up to you. You can do whatever you want to do. It's really your decision. 
but just be aware of all the things that we're talking about in this video, right? So with the Thai Elite Visa, you do have to report yourself, right? Every 90 days. So let's say you're gonna be in Thailand for a year. You've got to report yourself. I think it's every 90 days, if I'm not mistaken, right? So you have to go to the immigration or you, I think you can do it online too, but you have to do it, right? So there's always a little bit of work involved. And like I said, if you want to go work for a local company, let's say you want to get, you know, find employment, you know, you want to open up your own company, you want to employ yourself, whatever you want to do, you do have to get a work permit, right? You can't just work in Thailand on the Thai lead visa. So it's just that there are so many contingencies in Thailand that don't really exist in other countries, especially in countries in the Western Hemisphere. Like here in Paraguay, once you get your temporary residency, I know that's temporary, you can get permanent residency too, you know if you get married or you know if you convert later from temporary to permanent residency or if you should start a business you can get permanent residency which is for life yes you know if you don't get citizenship you will have to renew it it's just part of the process it's like this in the United States as well your green card is typically valid for 10 years maybe in some instances it might be valid for less than 10 years however if you decide not to obtain citizenship in America you can always renew your permanent residency card your green card you can always renew it assuming you didn't break the law you can renew it however in Thailand you never know what you're gonna get visa policies keep changing on the fly and let's not forget that Thailand is a monarchy so for people to say yeah I'm moving to Thailand for more freedom doesn't work like that doesn't work like that like whenever you depart your home country for a new land guess what's gonna happen you're gonna give up certain things to gain other things if you value your freedom of speech if you value your First Amendment rights then maybe Thailand is not the right place for you while you might be able to enjoy a lot more freedom in terms of taxes in terms of things you can do let me give an example and whatever we're doing here on this channel we do strive for balance and transparency so I'm gonna say that let's say you were to go to a beach in Florida often Sometimes the beaches are highly regulated and you actually have to leave the beach at a certain time sometimes that's at 6 30 7 p.m. or whatever 7 30 p.m. whenever the sun sets and there's a really strict regulations in place so the sheriff will pop up and tell you you know what pack your leave the beach they're closing it this is it so you can't be at the beach after a certain time it's highly regulated in Thailand you don't have that as much or you don't have it at all in many places you can stay on the beach as long as you want nobody's gonna care nobody's gonna bother you so there is a certain level of freedom in Thailand that you don't have in Florida in Texas many beaches are not very regulated so I can go to the beach in Texas pretty much anytime I want of course that's certain beaches so in this sense it's actually quite free in different places too there's always a trade off. Don't let anybody tell you that you're only going to gain by moving to a new country and you're never going to lose anything because that just doesn't reflect reality and given the loss that which is compared it holds true. Another thing that you should consider about Thailand is that it's just not so pet friendly in many places specifically in Bangkok where I used to stay many times and it was always a hassle walking my dog because I always came across people you know we just walked by a house and people didn't even like that I just didn't want to see any dogs you know they complain they're like why are you walking here with my dog and I'm like I'm not even on your property you know I'm just walking here on the street you know it's not even your property but there is a lot of xenophobia towards animals I'm always going to give the same piece of advice Thailand is a fantastic place to vacation in it is a great place if you're looking for short-term dating if you're looking for sex uncomplicated sex Thailand is a great place for that Thailand is could be your Shangri-La there's no question about that however Thailand is not this perfect picture like paradisic place people make it to be it just isn't there is a lot more to it and it is not perfect in any way shape or form but yes it is true that Thailand offers values it offers freedoms that certain Western countries cannot offer you or don't offer you however as I have stressed previously it is always a trade-off you gain something and you lose something and if you want real unconditional reciprocity in rights property ownership 
guess what? You probably have to find a different country and very possibly also a different region. One of the biggest mistakes that I've seen expats make, and this isn't just a one-timer, this isn't just a, an accident, this happened already thousands of times, potentially tens of thousands of times, or even more than that, where foreigners come to Thailand and they realize that the laws are prioritizing the locals and the foreigners are always gonna come in second spot. So what they end up doing is they end up purchasing a business, they end up running a business that doesn't really belong to them. Either they start a business with a person they do not know, or they start a business with their girlfriend, with their wife, and they think it's their business, but it really isn't their business because as a foreigner, you cannot own 100% of a business in Thailand. There is an exception to this rule, and that's if you're an American, then you can own a business in Thailand. But if you're a Canadian, if you're European, Australian, if you're from Latin America, then you cannot own 100% of a business in Thailand. So you see, you can open up a business that you don't own 100% yourself and you have to bring a local person aboard to even open the business. And this undoubtedly exposes you to a lot of unnecessary risk. Think about it, starting a business is a lot of risk in any country and to be successful in any business requires luck it requires skill, it requires money, and it requires connections, right? It requires quite a lot. So it's not 100% smooth as silk, it never is. So, and then if you go into a country where you cannot own the business 100%, it's one extra problem that you're dealing with. Whereas in other countries, like in Mexico, like in Paraguay, like in European countries, you can own 100% of the company. And owning 100% of company really gives you control. If you don't own 100% of the company, you do not control the company, you do not own the company 100%, and again, it's just one step harder. And let's not even get started talking about citizenship. The number of foreigners who obtained citizenship by naturalization in Thailand is a very small, insignificant number. We're not talking about citizenship by birth. No, we're talking about citizenship by naturalization, where you naturalize, okay? You have lived in Thailand for, I think it's probably 10 years now, and you had permanent residency, and what they do is they really only accept a limited number of people and only certain people, you know, it's like that also in Malaysia, in Vietnam and the Philippines, like the number of foreigners who have obtained citizenship in these countries, you know, you know, you can count them, but it's not tens of thousands of people, okay? Let's just be realistic. It's, it's a very small number of people. So just keep that in mind as well. Now that I've unloaded a lot of negative stuff about Thailand, I want to hear your opinion. What's your take on Thailand? Share your experiences. What has worked for you? Have you considered opening up a business in Thailand? And just share us the truth. Give us the truth. And if you need any help with obtaining a residence permit, and if you want to work with Nomad Elite, you can check out our website, which you should see displayed right below the video. As always, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching Nomad Elite, and we see you on the next video.